guys. Well, I've been asked to make another display. Uh, this time it's to display uh, candy or sweets in a little basket ready for weddings, events, christenings, that sort of thing. Uh, I've been given a photograph to try and work off and, and get her as a present as I can too. Um, so let's, let's get started and make this presentation or display and hopefully the customer will be very pleased with it. The uh, current customer has multiple displays that I've made and this will be just another one uh, to add to the list. Let's get started. Well, you know what they say, don't throw anything away. This is going to be perfect um, for a couple of the couple of the dividers. I'll mark it slightly oversized so we can cut it back to the correct size. Two or three divides in the list. Depending on the depth of the divider. So I've got three pieces of wood uh, cut slightly over length and to be over depth. And just sticking them together, and what that'll do is um, as I cut in a wave pattern, I can do the three at the same time. And they're all matching and hopefully save some time into the bargain. Um, uh, stick the pattern on. I've made a mark on the paper you know, to make sure that the bottom of the loop of the wave from the bottom of the wave to the bottom of the wood is 60 mil, which is the requirement. I've marked off the measure on the wood there. So as long as that level, uh, that'll be the 60 mil. Excellent. Uh, just need to centralise so the wave. So calculated that's the centre wave. So need to measure the centre of the wood. Remember the wood is oversized. So any issues, um, I can correct it with a bit of sanding, etc. Go to the final dimension required. Line up the paper that I've marked halfway and to the 60 every day. And what I always do is because I'm going to scroll saw the wave off rather than gluing the template direct to the wood. I always put a bit of masking tape on and then what that will do for me is prevent any tackiness on the wood from the adhesive that I'm going to use. Get the time for you. videos that I've seen for scroll sawing always recommend a bit of packing tape on lubricator blade. I don't know if it actually does that, but I've never had a problem with it. However, I've never done it any differently in fairness. I've not done a huge amount of scroll sawing, but I always put the packing tape on both sides. So 
So they're the centerpieces, ready to be cut. Scroll sword, excellent. So we've now got the dividers ready, enough for two trays. So two lots of three uh, for longitudinal, if that's the correct term, and one each for the horizontal divider. So effectively, they're going to sit. <coughs> All I've got to do is scroll sort out the way. Because the risk of cutting multiple pieces at the same time um, is if you make a mistake, there's three pieces ruined in one go. So you've got to make sure you get it right. First lot done. Relatively easy, I guess. Right. All cut. Let's take the uh, template off. Now, these two are going to be used on separate pieces, so I'm perfectly happy with that. These, however, will be used. Um, together on one piece. So what I'm going to do so that they're all completely equal I'm just going to mark them. One and two. And all the ones should be used on the one piece. And all the twos used on the second piece. And that way all the waves will match because there's going to be a slight variation in them. Facing right way. Two, one. And now just need to slot the slot in the wood so we can cross and fit into the opposite axis. And the way I'm doing this, if you can see, is I'm just marking out very faint with a pencil mark midway point with the thickness of the wood that's going to intersect it. I'll cut this out on the pencil. So hopefully you can see now, look at the gap. I'll bring the centre piece in, fits. It's a little loose this one, but once it's uh, slotted into place it won't matter. And it'll all be uh, nicely painted and covered. As with everything else I've done, I did the three at the same time. But remember I numbered the pieces, so these are all number two. So that they match exactly. Centers for box one, box two. Now the cross beams, or whatever term you wish to use, you need to find uh, the point at which you need to cut the intersection down from the top so that they would slot together as one piece. So and that's the next job, but measuring to be done. They fit nice, I'm pleased with that. Mine are playing around. They put them all to the same length. Climb it for 130 mil between, which it definitely is. Just took it off the ends. Around 180 mil. Again, just 
bit to cut off the ends, so I've cut them over the side. Easily 180 mil there. Perfect. Inside's done. Let's get the outside's cut. What I've done is adjusted the centre piece. In actual fact, this will help it much better than in. Cut a little uh, section off. Just going to try it now for the first time. I hope it all works in as it's on camera. As you can see, it's just jointed in. Um, probably need to take a little bit more off. Just got to make sure I keep 180 in the centre. Um, and then decide what we're doing here to align it with the curve at the front. Okay, so just the back of the box to do now. It's going to stand taller. So I've used this scrap just to get the idea of the height. And on the back end, it's going to be stenciled uh, candy or sweets or something, uh, depending on what the customer wants. So I'm going to cut the back now, and then we've just got the two side pieces to do. And we're there, really. Um, cut a base out, a bit of sanding, a bit of painting, a bit of tidying up. Away we go. So I've measured uh, the height of the scrap that I had. We got 34 centimeters. Mark off 34 centimeters. So I've rough cut the sides out. Uh, got the back, but there's some work to be done on the back. All these are extra long at the moment. The interior is just right. I think I'm going to call it a day. Just need a base, finish off, and a bit of sanding. Okay, so we're now trying to cut the back out, and I've come up with the template that matches the photograph that I've been given by the customer. Um, so I put masking tape down, some paper adhesive, stuck the paper on top and then covered it in packing tape. And I'm gonna cut two out at the same time. So cut the shape out on the bandsaw. Um, probably some tidying up. There's two pieces there. I'll just take the template off and separate them up. See what it looks like against the box. Well, I'm pleased with the overall look of that. I think that'll look good. Um, just firm the box up now. But what I want to do is undercoat everything first and maybe even top coat some of it uh, in a white gloss prior to assembly. It's looking good. So I'm going with a simple kind of box joint, I guess. Um, so I've made the measurements and then I'm just going to cut the marks out. That will give me a bigger surface area and make it stronger. Okay, so I've cut both lots out on the side of the box. And on the back of the box. Moments of truth. Let's see if they fit. It's not too bad. Bottom one, slightly too proud, I'll just nip there off on the pencil. Nice, good fit, just had to play with that bottom joint and everything's in tight. Sort the other side out. So joints cut. This slide slightly oversized will be cutting back. I made a slight error on the tenon on, on the uh, box joint this side. Um, I keep saying box joint, I hope that's what it's called. Uh, but overall it will be fine. Well, two coats of undercoat, two coats of gloss spray paint. Uh, just got to wait for them to dry and then we'll be ready to start pulling together. There'll be a bit of painting just to finish off. Uh, but I thought it'd be nigh on impossible to paint it while it was together, so I painted it separately, assemble it, and then do any touching up I need to do. 
just glued some sections together, just making it sh sure it's square, allowing it to dry off. I've done most of the spray painting, uh, there's a bit to finish off, but while I uh, get ready to finish the last coat, I want to do the base and spray them at the same time. So for the base I'm using obviously much thinner plywood, uh, just going to effectively draw around uh, the main display, leave a bit of space and then paint the bottom and have it all aligned and squared up. Want to cut on the inside of the line. I feel confident there's got to be a better way, or an easier way, but you get the idea. I'll crack on with, with this uh, off the video. So, just finishing off. Um, not the best idea in the wheels. Took me a lot longer than I expected. Um, clearly if it had had smaller tape it would have been easier and just run a line of tape. But, I think at the end of the day, uh, it's going to achieve what I want, but if I was to make it again, I would do it differently. Well, let's see if the idea works. Excellent. <laughs> it's a simple thing, really pleased with that. Not too bad actually, quite pleased. I think once it's glued down we'll be alright. Bit of touch it. So now let's get gluing. Well, gluing became more of a challenge than I ever expected. So, multiple clamps. Uh, but trying to clamp the centre, I tried clamping wood across it, etc. But it wouldn't, wouldn't fit, wouldn't pull it down. So I've now got my scroll saw and some wedges of wood to try and hold the centre in. And then I've got the whole thing resting on top of my planer. Hopefully it will glue in place. The outside edges certainly will. It's the centre that I'm more worried about. There's a bit of bow in the uh, thin plywood after the painting. We'll see. Now finished off with a flush trim router and touched up with top coat paint uh, all ready for the customer. I think once the candy are in and the colours pop it'll look amazing.